This show is brought to you by the patrons at patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Because of their generosity, we get new shows like File Underwater, where Gary and Cole are taking an up-close look at the history and music of the rock band R.E.M. If you would like to donate a few dollars and help us out making even more great shows, go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Out of the blackness of space. Mr. Sinister, I've heard the name. Frankly, I'm, I'm not, I'm not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeremy Greer, and I'm Gary Butterfield, and this is Days of Future Cast. And today we're covering X Men: The Animated Series, Season Two, Episodes Eleven, Twelve, and Thirteen. This is the season finale of Season Two. How are you today, Gary? I am all right. This is a marathon recording session. Yep. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> You've um, been going for like 18 hours today. Yeah, this is this, uh, entering in, <laughs> bravely entering into hour five at the beginning of this uh, this episode. Uh, but the nice thing is, to put this in context, I have no idea when you'll actually hear this, but we're recording on December 15th. So getting ahead, you know, tensing now so that I may relax in the future uh, is how I sell it to myself, and then I don't relax. Yeah. The end. <laughs> uh entropy that was the story JPG. <laughs> yeah that was the story of me um it's okay I, I am uh i'm doing good i'm getting ahead on some play stuff and like the nice thing is i'm like playing right now exclusively stuff i want to play which is real good like i've been making my way through tyranny which is excellent and then uh you know we're starting the bonfire side chat off season which is all stuff i want to play yeah and the comrade listener request which includes like games like invisible ink and stuff that i've wanted to play since they came out um, so it's going, I'm, you know, doing good stuff that I want to do, uh, which is I think, really, I think really that game is either free or, or it will be free soon. I'm really looking forward to checking it out. Like I, it, yeah. it looks really, really good. It sounds like something that's totally at my alley and people have told me as such. And mm-hmm. one, uh, invisible fringe benefit to, uh, you know, be putting out a podcast and having people, you know, listen to it. Um, and I'm contorting my voice to not say fans like the, the reason that we have people who, who, uh, listen to me, uh, who end up knowing my taste, even though they're not friends means that I get recommendations from, uh, you know, places I wouldn't maybe have not expected. Yeah. It's kind of great to have somebody be like, Hey, I've listened to you talk about video games for a long time. I think you'd really like this. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. Like usually people are right too. like people, uh, are, are generally, I've had good batting average with that. So yeah, it's cool. nice. It's a weird, it's a weird thing because like knowing somebody via a podcast is definitely a one way street. <laughs> so like mm-hmm. when you, when you talk to people, like they know you really, really well. And I'm like, you're like, who? And when they turn out to be very cool people and actually awesome, like it's so good. Like, and I've had a yeah. really, really good track record with duck feed fans and other, I say fans, but duck feed listeners and other people that listen to the shows. And so it's been fun. Yeah. 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 But let's get into um, some X-Men because I want to talk about this episode. I've been waiting for like two years yeah. to talk about this episode. This is, this is a highlight, man. This is a, so what, 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 uh, what happened last time previously? Previously on X-Men. So, so far on this season of the X-Men animated series, the X-Men have lost Xavier, uh, messed up the summer's wedding, gotten into a time catastrophe, explored the inner workings of Rogue's mind, and were forced to contemplate the horrors of Beast's love life, which after the last episode, if we recorded, it were actually straight up horrors. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will find out. Um, and this, this, uh, this is not going to be a super fun, positive episode of this of days of future cast. Cause uh, we're covering two episodes, uh, three episodes today and two of which are pretty weak. Yep. Um, but this first one is astounding and it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite episode of the series so far, which is XM two eleven Mojo vision original air date, February 5th, 1994, an alien Mojo kidnaps, uh, and cast the X-Men as his latest all galaxy television hit. Latest all galaxy television. That is a yeah, weird sentence, a, hmm. uh, TV guide or whatever. Um, he uses his psychic powers to pit. That's not true. Uh, to put them <laughs> against one another in a far distant planet. But when the superstar Mojo world long shot betrays this television tycoon and frees the X-Men, they must trust that the luck of long shot can get them home safely. Nope. Also not that, true. This is a very, that is a very false. Synopsis. <laughs> it's, it's a running, it's a running, it's a running, uh, gag. I mean, yeah. like this is, this is just terrible. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's either, it either gives away everything or gives away like another unrelated episode. Yeah. Um, it's very funny. So we, yeah. 
to get into the the, the episode, number one, I, I, I thought it was unique that we didn't have any kind of previously on segment. Um, like yeah. because usually in the Rogue episode from last episode, like they put all the Rogue clips together, and Gambit's terrible down to Bayou episode, they they put all the Gambit clips together. Everything you could ever want to know about Gambit. Yeah, Gambit. and this one they they just go straight into the title theme, which is really 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 good. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I like that as well, and it's a cool cold open with a character we don't know, you know. Uh, immediately and it's so good this whole yeah. scene is so good i love every single moment that long shot is on the screen in this first bit like it's just amazing aliens climbing up a mountain he's avoiding them he you know repels down into a floating a flying car and like <laughs> it's a convertible <laughs> it's just so good they're, they're kind of like broods but they're not quite he's yeah, using like yeah. um you know uh like they're like brood uh pterodactyls and stuff but it's like his cool action scene it's really over the top action but we later learn you know it's supposed to be mm-hmm. as he like gets into his his future car to to take off and stuff his convertible <laughs> <laughs> uh, convertible floating car and then uh then we see him like underwater shooting some stuff and then like out of nowhere psylocke is on the screen for like 0.2 seconds like for no reason yeah. other than i could i could tell but like that's a cool moment i like seeing those little cameos pop up and um yeah and then, yeah, then it goes to like a TV screen, like long shot. Like it's a, like yeah. it's definitely a TV show. The, the, the series, uh, which is super cool. Like it, you know, it's, it's pretty sweet. Like we don't know that this is what it is uh, until we do. And then we're introduced to Mojo uh, in this cartoon, who is a way over the top character in the comics. And I think that this actually, so one, this is an episode of the show that is uh, a comedy episode. Yep. This is, this is a funny episode. I think it is legitimately really funny. I do too. Uh, and this version of Mojo is exactly what I realized. This is as perfect a, a realization as any X Men villain. It's has been. he's he's like a screaming baby person. Like that's you know, and the voice acting it just captures it completely because it goes yeah. from like this whiny "you're doing it wrong" thing to this over the top to like this crazy like vaudeville villain almost like it goes it goes all over the place and everywhere it goes it it, 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 the voice actor just nails it like it's so good i should have looked up who it was actually i don't know why i don't know why i didn't do that earlier today flattery young man will get you absolutely nowhere (laughs) you little vermin (laughs) you little dog meat look at this See this nose hair? It can act better than you. It's full of um, like Im- you know, it feels like it's full of improvisation. You know, like he's just kind of like he get you know he's throwing a lot of the lines in there uh, and delivery and stuff. It's very good voice acting. He is so for people who don't know, like he's he's a he's a trip. Like he's like a, a flesh colored ice cream scoop on top of like a, a scorpion body. <laughs> like he's a, he's a big fat guy with metallic dreads on top of a scorpion lower half. Like Mojo is something else. It's um, it's wild, and I love it. So uh, he's super mad. Ratings are down. He blames Longshot. He goes into Longshot's uh, dressing room, and Dazzler's there. So there's a cool little another like I, I like Dazzler a lot. Cool cameo. Um, and it's a uh, short haired Dazzler too, not Disco Dazzler, which I like uh, short haired age Dazzler better. Um, and uh, he's essentially just berating Longshot. You know, hey, the the ratings are down. Um, Longshot has some degree of power. Like it's very strange the cosmology of this. Mojo world is not set up that well. Well, he cartoon. says, he says, long shot says like, Hey, look, you, you've burned out every good actor in the universe. Like I'm the only one that's willing to put up with you at this point. Like you can't lose me. Like I'm, I'm the one that makes the show. Like if this is your show, you tell me what to do. I'll do it. You just, you're the one that has to make it good. Not me, which I think is yeah. kind of interesting. Like that he's burned out all of these other actors in the, in the entire yeah. universe. Is that I Dazzler? Love- I didn't realize that was Dazzler on his arm. Yeah. Like, Cause he's got two women well, on his arm. So. <laughs> he's got Dazzler and another chick. <laughs> And it's just like, he's just like such, like such a cool, you know, he's, he's, he's a, he's a player. He just leaves with, uh, with two other players. <laughs> he's also introduced a major domo here, which is his like, uh, kind of dry assistant, mm-hmm. you know, who, uh, kind of advises him, uh, as he leaves. Mojo has a stomach ache because his ratings are down and major domo <laughs> brings a little tray with a little like branded and acid called Mojo's and acid. Mojo's and acid, dude. Like how great is that? <laughs> Actually, if I ordered up to the light, it looks like you in a tuxedo. He had a point, oh bulbous one. What do you mean? <laughs> it's very good. Uh, so Major Domo is like, hey, you know, I got something for you. What about these X Men? Puts in his X Men DVD, that same DVD that's been <laughs> making the 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 villain circles 
Yeah, you know? this is the one from Pizza Hut, right? Like it's the same. Yeah, it's the same one from Pizza real. Hut from that the uh, that the Sentinels had way back when in the season yeah. one. Cut to Major Domo eating a personal pan pizza after reading six <laughs> book <of> books. <laughs> like, um, also, how like Major Domo, and I'll, I'll I'll try to remember to get some of the clips. But he every time he speaks to Mojo, he calls him something like you know your your tyranny of your you know tyrant of television, or like he makes up yeah. these crazy like your Sultan of slime or something. Like it's just the most yeah. bizarre stuff that he calls him. It's it's really really good. Oh, 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 bloated one, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, we cut we cut to casual Gene and Scott uh, buying a TV for their new life, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is very, very strange. And they're just, uh, you know, they're like, our TV, you know, we need something that will not get broken. And he's like, why? And it's like, well, it's a long story because uh, Jubilee will destroy it. Um, and when they turn the little salesman guy turns on the TV, every channel is Mojo. <laughs> um, it's 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 Mojo TV. And Mojo uh, yeah. is like on in like full television announcer mode. Like, hey, 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 don't turn that dial. Have I got yeah, a deal yeah. for you? Like, it's it's ins- like he's so over the top. Listen up, one eye. I make the program decisions around here. And I don't, I don't, I really don't know how they make this work so well. It's all on the strength of the voice actor that because he just sells it again and again anything less like if you had had um what's his what's it creed's voice actor from the last episode yeah. this would be fucking terrible TV. <laughs> turn the tv <laughs> um okay and, so and of Mo- course Mojo cyclops and gene like turn his job turn his job offer down because mojo is basically presenting this as like hey you should come work for me i'll give you contracts i'll make you famous and like cyclops and you mentioned this um earlier today like is in full-on like angry cyclops mode is like what is this is this some kind uh, of joke yeah bl- bland angry cyclops is so good and like we're not playing with that mister you you're not going <laughs> along with your plan uh declarative angry cyclops is super good um so they leave, they they start to leave the uh the electronic store here. Yeah, and that's when Mojo starts yeah, zapping people. And uh Wolverine yeah. comes in with this line and says, Is it the fourth of July? Which like where did Wolverine from just the previous episode go? <laughs> where can we have him back? I love it when uh he zaps people, he's shooting electricity out of the TV. Um Cyclops he, he hits Gene, Cyclops just zaps that TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's real good and this is this cyclops just owning tvs just smashing him with his eyes uh <laughs> until he gets uh he gets electrocuted here as well mm-hmm. um and the rest of the x-men kind of just jump up and this is where like mojo all of a sudden gets real mad at the x-men and it starts screaming at them and hurling abuse at them um he summons yeah. spiral who does a little like a little dance maneuver which this i really really love yeah there, there's a there's a waltz theme spiral theme that plays i don't think spiral is named in this episode but that's she is, he is she is like I, she, he, he says spiral come here in the okay. scene so yeah i jeremy i have this uh because this episode has so many visual cues i'm watching in the background as we record um <laughs> when the x-men show up storm just comes from the sky <laughs> like she literally lands from the like so the, comes from the sky of the electronic store uh, yeah it's, also it's, when spiral comes through the the uh, tv she comes boobs first yep her boobs like come through and it's pretty great which is pretty interesting for a woman with six arms like we, we should describe like yeah. a spiral is is a pretty significant character in the x-men universe but like right here she's basically mojo's pawn and she, yeah. she she runs the tv shows for him and she's also like this interdimensional teleporter so she comes through the tvs and then starts doing this dance which has a little like just a little bit tinge of the x-men theme melody to it which i can always yeah. appreciate yeah and yeah, uh, cool. and then zaps him back to the stadium where mojo makes where- his magic the stadium is in a mountain that has Mo- Mojo's face on it. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. And then they, they pan. So the X-Men are, are putting their costumes here and it pans to the audience of just assorted weirdo aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Like anytime I, they show the audience, in this, there's, a, there's an amazing joke that happens with an audience pan in this. Yes. This episode yes. I really love. <laughs> it's um, so but they, good. <laughs> it's just like goofy aliens. Uh, they all get zapped in their costumes. And the idea here is that they, uh, they're going to be put on TV yeah. and, uh, Long shot sees and long shots like, hmm, but we don't really know why yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The, the Bojo tells the X-Men like, hey, we're, you're going to be my new stars. They don't, you know, you're going to fight for this and you're going to do what I tell you. And, you know, Cyclops again with the angry, the X-Men don't fight, you know, without a reason. And then, you know, mm. Mojo is like, well, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to teleport you in. And then Gary, I, I cannot yeah. describe to you how, how great these tv shows are like these tv shows within a tv show i love every single one of them this middle act with the uh 
so what's happening is Mojo is zapping them into TV shows for this audience. Um, and there are these little tiny treatments of the X-Men in these little simulated TV shows. And they get their own credit sequence yep. with their own music and stuff. Uh, it is astounding. Uh, so the first one, it, it's, it's Scott Summers and Storm get stuck into Miami Mutants. How did we get out here? I think we can thank our friend Mojo. <laughs> um, which is them like they immediately get to the, a, a speedboat crashes through the title screen <laughs> with with Wolver not Wolverine with Cyclops and Storm on it, and Storm is like, "How did we get here?" <laughs> it's super good, and they're just being chased by you know it's like a danger room situation essentially. They're being chased by you know helicopters, mm-hmm. uh, Mojo copters. Of course, they're Mojo Copters. Why wouldn't they be Mojo yeah. Copters? Um, super good. And this this is a whole like this is an action movie scene that you would see from like Miami Vice. Like they're being chased. The helicopters are dropping torpedoes. Cyclops is blowing up the torpedoes. He turns a button that just says like "push me," and then they start flying. The speedboat starts flying. <laughs> yeah, you know, this, this, yeah, push me. Very good. Turns the speedboat into fl- into flight mode. Like it, you know, turns into a plane. Uh, so they're fighting this stuff. Um, Storm, not you know, they fight some 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 helicopters, but they're about to get blown up because they the helicopters outnumber them, and uh, you know they they end up getting this freeze frame at the end of this thing, um, them getting blasted, and then we find out they have been like pulled from the TV world, uh, back into the stadium, mm-hmm. and they're in like these and, weird window pane things, kind of frozen in place. Yeah, that was the trailer, you know that, uh, and and the ratings go like huge, you know. Like the readings, everyone loves it. It worked for Mojo. <laughs> Mojo says that and, I'm seeing numbers that mathematicians haven't even invented yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, I um, love all of Mojo's asides in this. Like you could probably just put them all together and I would, I would be real into them. It's very, very good. The, um, the, the, and this is when I first watched it when I was younger, I probably didn't appreciate it for how amazing it is watching it this time, uh, noticing that they took two mutants and put them in that thing. I was just like, Oh shit, we get at least two more of these. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> it's so good uh so switches commercial we're back mojo's doing you know hamming it up doing doing more more mojo stuff and uh they start this uh this show too but long shot is watching and he's like oh you know i think uh mojo mentions this the showroom yeah because he hollers uh, up like con- uh i think i meant to put control room there not showroom sorry but he yeah, says control. like control room like let's get into show number two and then we see spiral in the control room and she, she has this, all the levers with her arms but she has this great joke where she's filing at one of her nails and she says that oh, uh, we've got to get somebody to help with the filing <laughs> yeah just, <laughs> <laughs> what show am i watching <laughs> where did all of these funny writers come from <laughs> yeah, it's very very goofy uh you know, um, but so that means, he, you know, he knows that there's something up and we don't really know his motivations at this point, which end up being kind of a fun twist. Mm-hmm. Um, they use the little thing that, that zaps two X-Men away. Uh, and this time we get Beast and Rogue as Rogue Star, <laughs> which that's a super good name for a Beast like sci- or a Rogue uh, sci-fi show. 100%. Out of the blackness of space comes Rogue. Yeah. And I love that they misspell Hank's name in the in the credits. Like they actually call him McOy instead yeah. of McCoy, which is good. <laughs> yeah. And then I love that Rogue is just is played uh, is, is starring Rogue as Rogue. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this is this is a space opera thing with complete with like you know nineties Saturday morning cartoon lasers and everything, and they're being attacked by uh, the Brood here. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- these are a major. This is a cameo. I, I think that the Brood will get their own episode later, but the Brood are a major X Men villain. I thought these uh, were the same, like chubby Brood, from, not quite Brood from earlier, but like, yeah, like they, they they're, they're basically the Brood in for all intents and purposes. Yeah, I think I think these are closer to on model Broods. Okay, um, in that they're not like they don't have. Yeah, these are closer to Broods. They don't have human bodies. They okay, have like cool. insect bodies and stuff. And the Brood are, are essentially just the aliens from Alien. Yeah. The Brood are not very interesting, actually. Um, but uh, you know, Rogue can pilot this the ship. Uh, she gets stuck because of the the handle. And there's an amazing scene. Uh, I just I just I'm watching it again where uh, Beast tackles all the broods, stands up, and he's just covered with broods. Yeah, and they're and all just... crawling over him. One of the broods and walks over and presses the airlock button with his claw. It's so good, <laughs> and, it, it's so and it good. sucks him out and all of all of his friends. They're like, okay, let's just get the fucking space. Let's do it. <laughs> 
very funny. Like, and, and just thinking of the, the brood pressing a button with his tail is very goofy. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really good. Uh, that's great. Um, yeah, so they're, they're falling into the sun. That's the end of the trailer, though. Yeah, and then, um, then we, they show back up in the stadium in the glass next to Cyclops and Storm. And then, uh, and then we get our third show. And uh, <laughs> yeah. this one is called I Dream of Jean and has Wolverine and Jean Grey in Wolverine starring in I Dream of Gene. Let's give it up. Push that applause button spiral. Let's rock and roll. Man, I was really hoping for like some full on like <laughs> I Dream of Genie parody stuff. Uh, like to come, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, especially them being like the married couple to fuck with Wolverine a little bit. I thought would be oh, really yeah. really fun. Um, instead, we get this weird scene where Wolverine is climbing up a building with his claws, and uh, Jean Grey is on top of this building trying to explain to him like, "Hey, Mojo said this was only for entertainment. Like, there's a way out of this. Like, we don't have to play yeah. into this." And a a robot, com- yeah, this is all fake. A robot comes from behind Jean Grey and turns into the Punisher, which we haven't seen it since last season's um, assassin. Time, assassin video game. Yeah. And uh, he, he turns into assassin. He starts yeah. blasting at Jean Grey. Well, um, and then somehow I don't quite remember. You're watching the show; you might be able to tell me. Like yeah. Wolverine gets involved with the Guardian and um, a couple of other like cosmic Marvel X Men guys. Yeah, he's these are robots that turn into just kind of miscellaneous characters mm-hmm. the idea is that it's it's uh wolverine's going crazy because gene was threatened mm-hmm. so gene's trying to explain to appeal to his rational mind but he has gone feral uh and uh yeah so she's just fighting gene's just fighting they're all just kind of fighting them um there's kind of a cool scene where gene puts herself in a title connect bubble and then the bubble gets shot and pushed off the roof yeah you know yeah. so it's like oh shit um and uh yeah but it's essentially just wolverine trying to save gene and this, is it this this part where we flash to the audience and we get the kind of the setup of the joke that you're going to get into in just a minute where uh, we yeah. actually see like a Cree in the in the audience, which is kind of a cool cameo. Um, well, it and- doesn't. The reason why is because Jean uh, says, you know, since this is TV, I can stop it. And she uses her mind That's to fuck with the instruments. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Mojo is like, oh, no, the audience won't handle this. I won't be able to handle this. She shows the audience. The audience are very mad. Uh, and then Mojo's like yo, we can't have this. We can't have the ratings go down. I'm losing my audience to a bunch of dead trees. <laughs> and it cuts to the audience and they're all reading individual books. <laughs> angrily. So like they're really like mad about these books. <laughs> there's, a, there's a scrawl in there and they're just like furiously reading because the TV got annoying. Um, at this point, because of this distraction, Longshot gets into the control booth, turns off the the series, like a, a lever that says series canceled <laughs> and presses the, the lever. <laughs> Dan- danger room max level and series canceled. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Danger team. Danger team max level. <clears throat> danger um, team. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And th- this uh, frees the X-Men. So uh, Mojo starts fighting them, but Mojo's not in great shakes, you know, in a, in a fight. Cyclops blasts off his tail laser. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, they're fighting and eventually drop this gigantic uh, bank of TVs on him. Yeah. On Mojo. And at this point, uh, Mojidamo is like, you know, not basically, I think at this point, um, Spiral sends them back to Earth and like they pop up back in the electronic shop and their civic civilian clothes and Cyclops is like, can someone please tell me what happened? Yes. Like, <laughs> and the, the reason why, uh, you know, is because Longshot did this. Longshot, when he showed up, he like gave Spiral the shh motion and he's doing it because he wants his TV show back. He got jealous, yep. which like, you know, long shots, my favorite X-Men. That's not how he works. You know, no, that's an inversion yeah, of his character, know. but I'll accept it. Um, it's cute. Yeah. And there's this, this great scene where um, like Mojo gets out of the rubble and starts like pitching Mojo or pitching long shot. It's like, come on, we got to get the team back together. We'll do everything. It'll be bigger budget, less pay. Like there's yeah, this yeah. R- thing and it's really good. Yeah. Um, I just noticed that Major Domo only has uh, three fingers. Um, so, uh, as he's doing this, he's trying to sell, you know, sell long shot on it after he gets out of the rubble yeah. and he's like, how about this? Uh, Ooh, Ooh, a jungle pick and points <laughs> to the savage land. And that's how we transition to the, the savage land check-in, which is a very weird transition. Like even in the, in the, in the realm of <laughs> this cartoon, like it's a very weird that they would have cameras hooked up in the savage land. I get, I, and it doesn't matter. It, like, I don't, I don't really care about it, but yeah. that's just a weird transition. Um, and this is, this is where it introduces the other humans, like the non, uh, you know, the major humans, you know, the, 
the she devil, I think, is this character. Um, Shauna who is, uh, is this? Shauna, is this, yeah. yeah, trying this to fight is, Sauron. Yeah, um, and Sauron hypnotizes her, and then uh, like she just becomes still, and then uh, Xavier wants to go help her, and Magneto is like, no, no, no. Like even with our powers, this dude would be hard to handle. Like we we got we can't do anything for her. We gotta we gotta keep saving ourselves. And uh, Sauron yeah. hypnotizes her, carries her off, and then we're. Into the last two episodes of the show, uh, we, we didn't really talk about this. Do you want to do a character spotlight before we get into these two so we don't interrupt the, the, the two-parter? Oh, that's probably smart. You want to do a long shot uh, since he's... Yeah, let's yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. He gets another episode later, but it yeah. makes sense to do it now. I really like Longshot when he shows up. Um, yeah, even like my I relatively recently reading Uncanny X Men when they're like in Australia or whatever, and he's hanging out kind of halfway hitting on Dazzler. Like he's just got this like cool laid back attitude that a lot of the X Men's don't have. Like X Men, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> tease the <tassin. laughs> But he's kind of he's he's a lot more blasé about everything that happens to the, the X Men. He I think he barely even considers himself an X Men for most of the time, and it's it's just like he's his power set is cool. He dresses cool. I love all of the Mojo stuff. It's usually written very funnily. Like he's he's definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. His whole his whole thing, like the whole Mojo TV dimension thing, his origin, I think, is pretty stupid. Just in that it is like it's it's making fun of TV in a way that's not really relevant anymore. You know, like, oh, people are just going to become TV zombies. Everyone just cares about those ratings. Like, it's it's a, a satire that is kind of toothless and is not going to age particularly well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, what came out of it is a guy, again, he has that essential tragedy, you know, of his powers only working when he thinks he's doing good. Um, and him, you know, he is kind of doomed to fail. In the, When they actually kind of expanded on his mythology in the Mojo stuff, it became pretty cool. Him just leading this rebellion that just fails over and over and over in this kind of cycle uh, that, I, that I really like. Um, he's also, uh, a fashion nightmare in a way that I appreciate. Like, <laughs> like he's like, he's like stuck in the eighties X-Men mode, which like, I like eighties X-Men a lot. We talked about eighties storm, mm-hmm. uh, brown, brown costume Wolverine. Like eighties X-Men is my favorite aesthetic for X-Men, uh, Cyclops pre ninja or Psylocke pre ninja. Um, and he's always looks like that, which I, which I really love. Um, he is my fave. Yeah. He's, he's really, really good. Um, I, I I wish we got, and I know that we probably won't ever, but I wish we could get some sort of movie treatment on him, like even just as a as a background character or something. I'd, I'd love to see him pop up in a movie because I think I think he's a fun character, and I think if you put like a, a younger actor like that was which was willing to take a risk, I think I think you could have a, a really fun long shot cameo. Or I don't really think he would support a movie by himself, but like a, a really fun cameo would be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Um, and I'm surprised he could have shown up in like first class or something. You know, with the, that weird, uh, those, those nobodies who hung around, uh, but they, you know, decide, decide to do it. Good luck is a hard power to film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a, what a, what an interesting character too. Like I, I didn't realize it at the time, but did, did he, where did he first show up? At? Did he show up in like his own book or was he, did he, cause I wanted to say like he had his own like long shot series before he was yeah. in the X-Men, right? Like that's a, that's a weird thing in this and for the, for Marvel to do. Yeah. He showed up. Um, it's, a. Uh, and the Senti's uh, miniseries, um, a six issue long shot series that um, was kind of tied into X-Men, but not really. They actually don't show up, um, but it, it takes place in canon. And then later he, he joined the main cast. Yeah. Um, his mythology gets weird as it goes along further. Um, you know, you get weird stuff like he's a, like Shatterstar, uh, which is a really terrible X-Force member going back to last episode. Um kind of trying to explain, you know, he's like the perfect warrior. He's like long shot, but no fun. (laughs) And it's like, is he a clone? Is he their kid? You know, et cetera. It's very, very confusing. Um, so some badness comes out of long shot, but when it's originally, uh, you know, original long shot is pretty good. Um, and we also find out who spiral is, who is his girlfriend who got genetically transformed. And she's be ricochet Rita, I think was the name of her. uh, Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Um, moving on to less cool XM two twelve reunion part one, original air date, February 12th, 1994 
Xavier and Magneto are held captive by Mr. Sinister and are used as bait to lure the X-Men into an ambush at the Savage Land Castle. That's all capitalized as if that's the name. Um, after capturing the X-Men, Sinister unfolds a plan to use their genetic material to modify Magneto's lowly band of mutates into something more powerful and uh, more powerful and deadly mutants. Which is a fairly accurate summary of what's going to happen in this yeah, episode. You did it. Um, <laughs> it took you It took you 24 episodes. <laughs> yes. Uh, this starts off with Xavier and Magneto climbing this cliff, uh, and guys riding pterodactyls come after them, and Xavier knocks out three of them by throwing a rock. It's, it's a really good move by Xavier. Even, it's so good that Magneto comments on it. He's like, good job, Xavier. <laughs> yeah. Who would have thought that this, oh, this old man throwing a rock would take out multiple dinosaurs? <laughs> um, pretty stupid. But they get to the top and we run into the mutates. Yeah, they're, um, they're going to the top of the mountain to try to grab Xavier's plane, thinking they could get out of here. And of course, yeah. the mutates show up and immediately just kidnap them. And I mean, like... I, and then we have this whole divergent thing with Morph that... I, it's it's actually pretty good. Like I, I like well, the before, more. Before we get to that, oh. I want to talk about the mutates for a second. Sure, yeah, because uh, they've shown up a little bit. But like, this is a side of Magneto. I think I, I really hate. Like this weird. Like in some point in the comics, they made him like he started this Shangri La in the Savage Land and somehow created these things. Like started doing genetic manipulation or something like that. Like they're his. They're his creations. The mutates. Mm-hmm. What is Magneto doing? Creating people. What, why does he why up. does he feel like he needs to do this and how is he doing it like i know he's kind of like a super villain so he can do anything with a computer basically but like, like what it doesn't make any sense and then the mutates that he creates like there's a wolf guy there's a lizard guy there's a like forearm dude and then there's vertigo who just i guess her power is like to make you feel kind of woozy with her multicolored clothes <laughs> like, yeah it's really bad like all of these character designs are bad i, I don't like any of these mutates yeah like, <clears throat> no, nobody looks cool in this yeah. um and even sauron who's kind of a major x-men villain who's associated with these guys uh sucks like none, none of this is good uh, none of the allies in the Savage Land are good. Like, we're going to get to Kazar. Yeah. Shauna, they suck. But just the idea that this is tied into Magneto's, like, perfect, like, kind of sublime backstory of him being essentially Malcolm X, you know? Mm-hmm. But also went and created his own land of mutants in the... And, you know, I hate these two episodes, and I hate everything with the Savage Land and the cartoon. I don't know what I would have done if you asked me to square that circle. You know, if you're like, hey, this is stuff that we have to put in the comics. The Savage Land, like it or not, are a major part of X-Men mythology tie it into this cartoon universe i have no idea how i would do it um, i mean and they the 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 concept here like the the lead up here is something interesting like i actually like the mechanics of what they were trying to do like the, the putting xavier and magneto on their own away from the x-men in a world that they don't know about is is actually pretty interesting and then and like they don't have their powers exactly and then not have and then not have that take up the bulk of every episode like just have that be little stingers at the beginning or the end that's actually kind of cool and then you know culminate in a in a two-parter episode where everything's going to come together like they're going to it's, it's appropriately entitled you know reunion but man like it's just such a drag i don't it seems like everyone has to fight a dinosaur and i, I like dinosaurs Excuse me. <clears throat> I like dinosaurs, but like, yo, I don't need to see mutants fight dinosaurs. <laughs> just... Jeremy, I love dinosaurs, <laughs> and this 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 has made them so stupid and boring. <laughs> like dinosaurs and cavemen, I just I don't think this is interesting. Yeah. Like, it is an aesthetic thing, but I've never, you know, dinosaurs are cool. Uh, I don't think cavemen are cool, and I don't uh, want those things interacting. But they don't feel very X Men to me. None of this. You know, and that's really the thing. Whereas the, the finale and the kind of overarching theme of the first season was so tied into the themes of X-Men. If you want to make a, in my most charitable mind, this ties in because it's like genetics, you know, it's sinister and it's Magneto messing around with genetics and creating mutants. And like, you know what it means to have this kind of like this identity that comes from your origin as opposed to your actions and things like that. But it's so sloppily handled and just not very fun on the screen. Well, like, like it's amazing that this is a comic where like Charles Xavier takes out a bunch of pterodactyls with a rock and it's not cool. <laughs> How did that happen? Like <laughs> seriously, <what> the <laughs> I, I just, yeah. and, and again, like the character designs, like, and once you put the, at some point we put the nasty boys along with the, uh, the mutates and, mutate. yeah, and boy, is, is that like a difference there? Like that's a contrast that makes every mutate look <laughs> fucking terrible. Um, so now we move on to this morph thing. They've gotten a message from morph, um, luring them. And he's in, uh, Branson theater. Uh, 
and he is, and it's literally Branson Theater uh, yes. at a fair, <laughs> and he's doing a, a one man stage show of Jekyll and Hyde, uh, yeah. which is pretty cool, uh, I think. I, I mean, it, it is, and he actually does a little performance, and I, I, I love the note here, like on the sign as we go into this, that he's named himself Xavier Murphy. <laughs> like it's yeah. just, it's, it's a really good. Like I'm going to name myself uh, Daddy McFather Ficker. Like. Yes. <laughs> um, but and, yeah, they, uh, they, there's, a, there's an ahead. awesome part where they're gonna they're gonna rescue him or whatever, um, and Sihoff goes, "No, let him finish." <laughs> like, Sihoff <laughs> has never seen this story before. I'm really like, into the ending. <laughs> no, the pain! Oh, the terrible torment! Henry Jekyll cannot endure such utter agony, but it matters not to Edward Hyde. Uh, weirdly enough, the Mister Hyde turns into is the Marvel supervillain Mister Hyde. Oh, is uh, it? So that's, that's I, guess, actually, yeah, yeah. I guess it is. I, forget, I always forget that that's actually like a villain. That's so weird. It's like Dracula showing up in the X Men. So. It's it's a very like it's a very C list villain, but it's a, it's kind of a nice little visual callback. They go backstage to congratulate him, uh, but uh oh, Sinister's there. With his black lipstick <laughs> and his. Of course, you know. Yeah. I love when the uh, the guy and I can't remember the dude's name, so forgive me, but the purple one. Um, Oh, uh, Gorgeous George. Gorgeous Ruckus? George. Thank you. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. Ruckus. Gorgeous George reaches under the tent and grabs uh, Wolverine's foot and then drags him outside. And that's how the fight yeah. begins. <laughs> so, I mean, the, before that, there's a little bit because they run into Morph and they're doing the will they, won't they, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who you are, uh, et cetera, kind of thing. And uh, he, they're saying like, hey, you know, you're one of the team. We want to help you. And Morph at this point, uh, he breaks and he's like, hey, Mr. Sinister is here. You have to get out of here. This was all a trap. I'm sorry. Uh, and that's when the the actual fight starts, where uh, where Gorgeous George goes and drags Wolverine out, which is really fantastic. And uh, we're in a fight with the Nasty Boys again, which like that, you know, I can't get mad about that. Um, I like. But the before nasty we get into the the actual fight, like we have to go back and meet Kazar. Um, oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kazar and his like feline tiger buddy, and they're Sabu. Yeah, and they he does like some things to get some um, triceratops, which he keeps calling three horns because oh he's a caveman. God. And um, no more key. You know, like Kazar is like a wealthy. Uh, it's like a Tarzan story. He's a wealthy uh, guy who got like who was raised here, or like decided to become a jungle man. Nice. His story sucks so bad. Like Kazar is so shitty. This is such the worst side of the X Men. Yeah. Like, God, do I hate you, Kazar? When I, when I uh, collected the toys. They put out a Savage Land box set, and it was Kazar, Shauna, and Zabu. And like, I bought it, but I didn't feel good about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be me in 2022 with Dark Souls 6. I'm going to buy it, but I'm not going to feel fucking yes. good about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy this Funko Pop. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. uh, but Kazar gets the, the the three horns to like tackle the uh, mutates and the, freeze. The stampede. Uh, yeah, the stampede, stampede into the, the mutates and freeze. Magneto and uh, Xavier, who he blames for kidnapping. For number one, he blames rightfully blames Magneto for creating all of this madness and like building the citadel and making people go crazy. Um, but blames Xavier as well, and because because he's you know guilty by association. Um, but we learned that that was his wife from the very beginning, or from the you ending of the last yeah. episode that Sauron had hypnotized and taken away to the citadel. So and he's and he's pissed. So oh yeah. So after that fight scene. A lot of fight scenes in these episodes. We go back to Branson to the the fight scenes that I crave, featuring my favorite villains, the Nasty Boys. Nasty Boys. Um, and uh, this is just you know, Mister Sinister keeps forgetting that uh, Cyclops is there apparently, <laughs> and like, Cyclops his, can hurt him. <laughs> yeah, his his Nasty Boys are doing an okay job, you know, fighting. Ruckus is standing around. It's a fashion, you know, fashion explosion. But they you know they kind of knocked Wolverine down and left him alone. So he comes out, causes the distraction that the X Men need to get the upper hand at this point. Did um did you catch that giant mouth on Ruckus? By the way, when he oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I made sure to do a screenshot of that. And I just I just tossed that bad boy in the notes. <laughs> That's an anime um, as fuck mouth right there. <laughs> it, it, it looks like it's like that uh, that Legion movie. Um, yeah, that came out about the angels. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Cyclops gets super pissed at this point and just starts like just slamming everybody, like bashes everybody. Uh, he's just like destroying Sinister, uh, and we know he's the only one who can who can hurt Sinister. But they just decided to leave Ruckus alone because it's a cartoon X Men fight where you only fight one thing at a time. 
Where is it yeah. that um, Sinister makes like a shitty comment about breaking up the marriage, about breaking up the wedding? Because there's, I think that's what pisses Cyclops off the most. Like he makes like a yeah. like a, just a little bit of a side of like, oh, the X Men are here, you know, and they're all single. Like he doesn't say that, but it's like some weird like off, like it just it's just strange. But it pisses Cyclops off, and I love it so much because he still hasn't married that chick. Get married to her. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you waiting for? You're making a great point. Also, though, I'm watching this in the background, and I don't know if you noticed this. So it goes to commercial after this point. They knocked out, uh, Ruckus knocks out the X-Men. We go back to the nasty boys getting on the jet. They are 100% in Australia, not Branson. There are two kangaroos (laughs) watching Sinister's biojet. There's a koala on a tree, dude. What happened? This this actually kind of confused me because I, for a minute I thought that they had landed in the Savage Land and they were taking the X Men to the thing and then like and, and then they go then they start talking about like oh we've got to load them up in the plane so we can leave and I was like where are they where did they go they went to Australia <laughs> why what I don't know dude you didn't hear that there's kangaroos in Branson Missouri now <laughs> and koalas the, yeah. the two the two animals that you associate with uh with australia they had to do uh (laughs) they brought in the kangaroos to get rid of all the nutria rats it's it's uh it's 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 ridiculous it's um but this is there's awesome fight fight stuff here like wolverine uh wakes up and he's um fighting tarpit uh or gorgeous george a lot and there's awesome like there's really cool things that happen he's running and george's gorgeous george like scoops him up Mm -hmm. and like you know knocks him off and then he uh he lands and because they have gene he runs uh, at Sinister and Gorgeous George steps in his way and he just slices through him and runs through him. Yeah. It's awesome. Like this is, this is cool. There's cool action in these episodes. Um, but uh, Sinister but, used Morph to, yeah, to fool him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he pretends to be Gene. And so uh, like, and then captures the real Gene and flies off into a plane and Cyclops and Wolverine are very, very sad. He doesn't just fly out of his plane. He puts his leg up on, on like part of his bio plane, which looks like a Protoss ship. Like it looks like it's from Starcraft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, puts his leg up and goes come on bo-, or like let's do it boys or something like that like, it's a real like a uh, really awesome rocky horror uh, kind of way to take care of this as he's knocked out uh wolverine and scott and takes gene and now we get back to kazar and magneto and xavier and like they're crossing a, a, a moat to get to the uh the citadel and like again we have this weird like hydra dinosaur thing that pops up and um kazar's method of dealing with this is hilarious he takes a club he climbs up onto the, the dinosaur's back he makes like a high-pitched yip, 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 noise <laughs> like that dude on the discovery channel which a, a reference that five mm-hmm. people will get i guarantee you um and then throws the club and the dinosaur goes to chase the fucking club like it's a dog <laughs> <laughs> dinosaurs <laughs> This this dinosaur is a real dipshit. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, dipshit. It actually shows his eyes get angry and red when he goes to chase the stick. That's a, like his eyes open all the way. It, yeah. It's really dumb. They're they're going towards a citadel that's in the middle of this moat, you know, to get to mm-hmm. uh, uh, Magneto's former like gene- genetics base. Fuck me. Um, <laughs> and uh, they know this secret passage. They're like Magneto's. Like I built this place. I know a secret passage. Okay. But of course, uh, all of the mutates are waiting for him at the top of the stairs. And like, yeah, yeah, the, the master knew about your secret passage immediately. Like, you're not fooling anybody. Um, yeah. I, I love the reaction here because Kazar just fucking jets. He literally just runs, <laughs> jumps off the thing, and then lands and then leaves. He's like, I'm I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think I was going to have to fight mutates. <laughs> I'm out of um, here. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> Shauna who? <laughs> Him and his tiger to do it in sync, too. <laughs> like, in step. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so bad and this dude that shows up is that uh oh my god yeah he's he reminds me isn't there a hulk character that, that's called the leader that looks like this yeah. dude yeah yeah, yeah. It, uh, it's a very straight but this is not the leader who is the leader is just a position this is brainchild brainchild like he stretches those r's out dude like it's bad yeah. <clears throat> real shitty goatee real bad receding hairline yeah um so he's a little super genius guy and he's taken over he's the new leader yeah. Uh, which you would not expect. Or, you know, he's not the new leader. Uh, he, he, he's Magneto was like, you're the leader. And he's like, no, it's not me. You'll see. Uh, they chain him up and then Sinister shows up. Yeah. And that's where like Xavier says, Mr. Sinister. I've heard the name. Frankly, I'm not impressed. Is, is super good. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Sinister starts telling everybody about how all of these mutant suppression devices work, why they don't work on the mutates, what he's doing there. Like he's in full on like exposition mode. Like this is all of the stuff that they you, just been talking about for a while. Like he goes on for yeah. a while about this. Uh, yeah. Morph tries to and break out of his control. That doesn't work. And so he gets chained up. No one has any patience for Sinister explaining this shit. No, everybody's like, done with the this characters shit. characters just are just like, get on with it, you know, or they, they do what you will. At least I won't have to listen to you talk. Like, nobody is into Mr. Sinister's villain speeching at this point. Um, and his plan is, like, he just wants to get their DNA to do mutiny shit. Um, so yeah, like, he pretty, just wants to, like, combine DNA, DNA like it's a... Um, like it's a like a chemistry set, right? Like he just wants to like, just see what happens with it. He, I think he even says like, it's totally unpredictable. He has no idea what's going to happen. It just, but in the end it's right. And he, I hope he hopes he has the time of his life. Like the, it, it is, a, <laughs> the, um, it's, it's really silly. And it's also like, Oh, Magneto already did this. He created these mutates, the guy. Um, so they, they he mind controls, Sauron mind controls Xavier to do the like, I am at these coordinates, join me, friends. You know, you are good at turning me on uh, to the rest <laughs> of the X-Men. And Beast, at the very least, is like, this is Yeah, this some, is something's not right here. Yeah, There's a great moment uh, where, because um, he's telling this to the rest of the X-Men, but uh, Wolverine and Cyclops come in, and they're like having no nonsense about any bullshit. They, like, he just walks up and it's like, we need to talk. Gene's gone. Yeah, that's really good. Like they, they, they also say at the same time, there's like these little yeah. comedy beats where they accidentally <laughs> say that, you know, we have to talk you first. Okay. Like it, it's really silly. Um, I think Gambit literally says something like, guess who we found? <laughs> uh, Cause Jubilee wasn't around to do that. I was just about uh, to say, where's Jubilee at? <laughs> yeah. Guess who's on the TV guys. Um, Sauron who, you know, comes in is supposed to be real scary. It doesn't, doesn't totally work, but the X-Men are going to Savage land to end this nightmare. Yep. Uh, that is the uh, the Savage Land arc of this cartoon. One more episode, Gary. That's all we got. <laughs> yeah, thank fucking God. Uh, moving on to Reunion Part 2, original air date. Uh, this is X-Men 213. Original air date, February 19th, 1994. Upon touchdown in the Savage Land, the X-Men lose all their mutant skills and are immediately captured by Sinister's nasty boys. Uh, Wolverine escapes and teams up with the native Kazar. Uh, the two travel to the Citadel in an attempt to free the X-Men and Shauna. The She-Devil also accurate <clears throat> yeah so yeah we um i actually I, I like the idea that number one magneto made a dungeon for his citadel <laughs> because he's a super villain <laughs> and um the, the again just the animation like the lighting that they do here is, is really interesting like they're carrying torches because magneto put a dungeon in did not install electric lighting so you have to have mm. a torch or maybe he installed yeah, magnetic like lighting that. or whatever oh hey uh, <laughs> um he also says that like their DNA are going to live on as a race of super mutants or something. And then he later like contradicts himself for <laughs> that later. So who cares? It's yeah, his, he's not very good at planning. Like the way that he keeps like not accounting for Cyclops, <laughs> things like that. Um, you know, leading everybody into the, into their cell, uh, their dark dungeon cell. It's actually, um, now that you when, mentioned that, like his last plan all depended on morph. Like he didn't do, really yeah. do anything. It was all morph that got his, his plan going. So yeah, he's, he's terrible at this shit. Even this one is kind of, you know, morph dependent in a way that sure. I'm not comfortable with. Yeah. Um, but the X-Men land in, uh, the savage land beast is like suitably impressed and they realize very quickly that they don't have their powers. And then sure enough, yeah, the nasty boys and the mutates show up and there's a really this long fight scene right here for the, for the X-Men not having their powers. Like, I don't, I don't feel like this was necessary at all. It's not interesting and it's not fun. It's it's the X-Men are not as fun without their powers. There's an amazing scene where, uh, they're trying to lift up Xavier's jet. Well, rogue is, she realizes she doesn't have her powers. Gambit says, well, just let me take care of it, Sherry. First, you charge the card. And like, what were you going to do with that jet and that card? <laughs> You're just going to blow like, it up? <laughs> you are not the correct tool for this situation, LeBeau. Um, you know, but Rip then they, you know, they realize they, they uh, so there's that fight scene you mentioned yeah. um, where they're, they're definitely outnumbered and surrounded. And I, I keep, uh, you, you mentioned this too, like the X-Men are boring to watch with their, their powers. And like, it's just like that Wolverine movie where it's yeah. an hour and 45 minutes of Wolverine not having his mutant healing power and being beaten the shit up. Like, that's not fun to watch. That's not what Wolverine is. <laughs> so, yay. You would think it would be interesting to rob them of their powers and make them, like, deal with stuff. And maybe there are there are treatments in the comics that do that well. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not it. No. You know? Rogue without her powers is not trained to, like, fight or anything because she doesn't really need to. 
You know, like she's she's just super strong. Like she just slaps people. I, I do like and that. that um, so. There's like, why is Beast still blue? I it's because he's his mutation is his like. I why is he a big strong guy? Yeah, the the sure. blue the blue fur thing was like a science experiment gone wrong. Oh, I guess uh, I guess that's not actually, actually his to, mutation. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But his yeah. mutation would be him being a big strong dude. Um. So and he still seems like he, you know he didn't lose muscle mass. From yeah. being in the Savage Land, and he can still like flip around and stuff because he shows him like you know jumping up and knocking somebody off of a um, <laughs> pterodactyl. Jesus Christ, I hate these episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, all these dumb dinosaurs. Uh, Wolverine gets uh, actually knocked off a cliff here, which is ends up important. Yeah, um, and falls down to the water and ends up uh, liaisoning with uh, with Kazar. Mm-hmm. And there's right a brief here. fight uh, before they actually have a conversation with one another, and they're like, "Oh yeah, now we have to run away from the flying dinosaurs and." Oh, this just goes on forever. It feels like, um, yep. Sinister, uh, after giving a bu- uh, some more speeches, steals some of Magneto's DNA or his power or whatever, and then gives it to Burn. Vertigo. And yes. I don't understand anything about what happens now. Like she just sh- like <laughs> sends some like sparkly light at them. And then like, there's an extended scene where Gambit and rogue are like, uh, 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 and then they just fall asleep. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's very confusing what Sinister's actual plan is. Like, <laughs> it seems his plan is just like to fuck things up. Yeah, he's the Jill it's, Stein it's, of Zil- supervillains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's extreme. It's extremely no good. Um, <laughs> it's extremely no good. Yeah, yeah. The uh, so Wolverine and K- Kazar do their meet cute and immediately become like super buddies. It's very like weird. Like Wolverine's weird camaraderie that he has with people. Like friendly Wolverine is one of my favorite Wolverines in the show. And he just straight up like uh, jumps behind uh Kazar in the saddle and it's like, Do these dinos have seatbelts? Yeah, a, it's and a weird thing. Kazar tells Zabu, I'll be back if I'm not avenge my death. <laughs> to his fucking tiger. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a tiger. It's um, a tiger, dog. Like I know you've got him trained well well. I don't think vengeance yeah. is on the list though. Um Extraordinarily silly. We go back to Sinister, he's doing more like talking about how he's going to mix up his DNA. This is where we learn that he lo- you know, his whole life has been trying to get Scott and Jean. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they've ever explained why Scott and Jean's DNA is so perfect for each other and creates cables, but that's what he wants. Yeah. Uh, and he's kind of like, you know, lining them up in their villain and their superhero cages in the dungeon. And he's going to take them one by one. Uh, and this is a great place where everyone's just mouthing off to sinister. Like nobody gives a shit, like <laughs> you know, shut up and do it. Then <laughs> like, nobody wants to hear him. Uh, his motivations. And then we get the scene that everybody has been waiting for, for Gambit to tell rogue that he loves her in the third person. (laughs) (laughs) Gambit not say this about many people, but Gambit loves you. And then they kiss because they don't have powers in the comics. uh, Something very similar to this happens. And they, there's a real implied fuck. Sure. So. Yeah. Because why wouldn't you take advantage of this? Like one time in the savage land, right? <laughs> like if you're no, Gambit, totally. it's like you're about to explode. <laughs> savage land is the ultimate condom. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Come to the savage lands. STDs don't exist. Probably. Yeah, what stays in savage lands? Uh, so Wolverine shows up on a fucking pterodactyl again. Yep. Uh, with Kesar. Uh, and he's, you know, he's kind of got an advantage because he still has claws, even if he doesn't have his healing power. You know, so that's why he makes sense to be the the X Men that that does this. Mm-hmm. Um, the Nasty Boys kind of show him up when the, when he comes downstairs. Vertigo is just kind of torturing the X Men with dizziness. Sure, why like not? Just, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I love this. Um, like in Kazar at the time has gone down and freed his like horribly offensive stereotypes of. <laughs> I mean, just like a bunch of white people in loincloths, basically. But yeah, like he gets them out, people. and they're gonna go raid the lab. And they get to the door and Ruckus screens at them. They fall out. And then the brainchild runs over there and closes the door. And that's all we see of them till the end of the episode. <laughs> they get that's knocked it. off the cliff. Um, yeah, that's it. And uh, like somebody, the same thing happened in the Mojo episode where somebody just walks up and blandly closes a door. <laughs> and that's their action move. Extremely good. Um, but at this point, Xavier gets loose somehow. I think there's like some exchange where someone like hits him or something. Um, maybe Wolverine like falls into him, but Wolverine he gets loose. Wolverine uh, Wolverine yeah. uh, removes his restraints, and, uh, and uh, Vertigo try Vertigo zaps him, but he manages to get a hold of this this gun anyway and destroy the machinery. I think, or he tells Morph to. 
No, no, he he, he gets he jumps over and like turns the machine off. Oh, you're uh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the, and the machine is really crazy because it's liquid. Like he smashes a thing and like this goo falls out. Sure, why not? Who cares? Yeah. Uh, so everyone has their powers back, and now it's time to time to fight. And over this is there, a, Zebra falls over because he can't walk anymore. This is and like his. You can see his legs like light up with like anti power or whatever. But this is a really yeah. great fight scene. Like everything here, oh, like yeah. there's you see it, the camera stays stationary and like the characters kind of move in and out of frame. And there's moments where like someone flips and then shoots a guy yeah. and then flips over and shoots another guy and then flips off screen and then someone else jumps in. Like all of this is really really good. Like I really enjoy this. It's super cool too because it's like these guys have gotten fucked over over and over and now that's like they're pissed. Yeah, exactly. You know, like this, like you stole my DNA, dude. Like this is not okay. And Cyclops um, more than anybody is pissed. Like, and he's going yeah. after Sinister, and they get into this like classic like beam battle. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> where the beams yep. meet in the middle and it's like going back and forth. Um, and there's a there's a morph at this point. Like, it's still under Sinister's control, so he goes over to get a gun. And to shoot Cyclops, and that's when Xavier interferes and convinces Morph, like, "Hey, no, you're you're an X Men. You'll you're always an X Men. This is your family. You should be good to us." He turns around and shoots Sinister, and Sinister literally disintegrates, and everybody is surprised about it. Yeah. So, so Cyclops, Cyclops is furious. His his beams win. His beams are stronger, or the stronger beams explode yep. Sinister into a thousand pieces, um, and then onto the ground, which Brain Child immediately runs outside. And starts gathering them up. Really gross. Like it's it's amazing. Like it's such a weird, like little pathetic move for him to do that. Uh, I think we got the chronology messed up a little bit. Morph shooting sinister is what breaks the tie, the beam tie. Oh, okay, um, yeah, sure, that's what I. But Green Child comes out there and starts picking up the pieces, and he goes like, "Master, master!" And then Jean Grey takes all of the pieces of Sinister as they're trying trying to coagulate and spread, like explodes them in the sky and spreads them to the the corners of the Savage Land, and then, which is pretty, you know, pretty fucked up. Pretty cool, but also then says like, "It'll take him a while to come back from that." And I'm thinking, shouldn't you have kept that dude in a bottle? Like, keep an eye yeah, on that guy. Keep one of those. <laughs> Don't just yeah. let him out into his place of power that he's already taken over once. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's, it's silly. Yeah. Um. So Sauron then activates the self destruct yep. here, and then uh, and then we're basically the, the episode's over. We get some rebuilding scenes that I didn't know this hey. village was destroyed. So yay for Man. that! I guess we, I guess we find that out early in the season when Magneto and Xavier find out that there is a, a village that's been destroyed. But X, the X Men are yo. Before that happens, uh, Storm walks over and lifts that lever for the door, and all of the Savage Land guys are just staying there staring at the door. <laughs> 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 um it's very good that's really yeah. good <laughs> there's also when they're uh when they're repairing the village there's magneto without his cape on top of a roof hammering it hammering a hatch like a, a straw roof uh extremely good extremely so, good i uh, love it this this it's i hate these episodes so much there's there's a couple of good moments and i'm like i mentioned the fight scene's really good but um oh i guess i guess right at the very end professor xavier is like hey magneto we, we worked well together why don't, why don't you come join the x-men and he's like no nah. We're not going to do that. Yeah. We're, we'll always be anti each other or something. Yeah. And uh, the Sauron is now in control of the Savage Land, but uh, Sinister shows up. Uh, his face <laughs> appears on the beach. Yep. There. Because <laughs> he's going to come yeah. back. Because you didn't gather does. up all of his pieces and keep him in X-Men jail, which you should have, you by the way. It's it's such a... His face appearing on that beach is so silly. It's so like, dumb. It, it, there is the same... And uh, kind of makes a connect the dots picture of his face in the sand that then talks. And then there's, there's like, like <laughs> some red sand that makes the, the little red diamond in his forehead. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, um, it's super what bad. a contrast between the end of the first season. Like I like I like Mr. Sinister. All right. But I, I think I mentioned this before, like in the comics, he's a schemer. Mm-hmm. here his plans are too stupid for it to be cool they're almost they're like, barely even plans like i'm gonna combine like stuff and see what happens like that's his plan that sounds like something you do when you get high and you get hungry <laughs> <laughs> like he is, he's a little kid uh he, he is ridiculous and the savage land is is definitely my least favorite part of x-men lore so much so that i i don't think that there's anything cool about it same. Like, I don't think Sauron's cool. I don't think Kazar is cool. I don't think the mutates are cool. Um, there's like nothing I think is good about it. It is extremely bad. There's there's nothing that redeems this place for me at all. Like a, yeah. at all. I just I just don't care about it. I remember reading the um the 
Marvel, the X-Men uh, guides, the who's who in the Marvel universe or whatever they're called. Um, the official indexes where they have all the characters. And I remember reading the entry for the Savage Land Mutates and thinking some of them had cool powers when I was young. Mm-hmm. Like I, I can get down with the idea of uh, somebody, you know, somebody being able to make people dizzy. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, you know, it's, it's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Uh, but then once you read it and you actually read their backstory, it's just so contrary to like what I think. The, I don't understand what they're trying to express. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand. Guys. Besides, like there's a playground of like weird stuff to happen. Like that's. It really feels like it's a it's a writer's yeah. conceit more than anything. Of like, ooh, you know, there's a there's a there's a jungle in the Antarctic. Like that's just such a it's such a, like a a contrast. Like, you know what it feels like? It feels like a George Lucas move. To me, like it's like, oh, when I was young, I liked uh, Doc Savage and all these uh, kind yeah, of, yeah. you know, Tarzan and stuff. So let's let's recall that pulp, sure, uh, yeah. you know, pulp roots. God, you say that. Um, I- I'm not going to tell you why, but I- I'm reading a extended universe book about Star Wars, and Luke literally just <laughs> Luke literally just swung down on a vine to save Leia, and it's just the so most. <sighs> man, you you reap what you sow. I like I have no sympathy for you. No, you shouldn't. You, you shouldn't. Expecting? This this is this was this was me being coherced. So anyway, oh. I'll, I'll tell you after the show what's going on there. But anyway, the um... <laughs> I hope everything's all right at home. The, uh... <laughs> yeah, this is what I do when I get sad. Yeah, and I want to feel worse pictures of himself when he was like, slightly younger. And uh, yeah, you uh, you. I read, read, I read Star Wars. Novels. I read terrible novels and watch terrible TV. That's that's what I do. Oof. Um, so I think on the whole, I think it's a good season. I think even the beginning stuff with sinister with the wedding is pretty decent. Yeah. I like, you know? I like that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And the, the short story is the kind of tertiary team members getting their own highlight episode. I think is great. Like I, I'm always going to like a collection of short stories. I do too. And I think this really sets us up for like, what's going to be an extended season of multi-part episodes and next yeah. season for season three. And I think that works really well. Like at this point, at the end of the season, we kind of have an idea of who all of these X-Men characters are. Like we, we feel good about knowing who they are and like what their motivations are and things like that. Like it, it actually works. There's, there's very few episodes that I straight out and out don't like. And even the beast episode, which I would have included in that, like it, it ended up being okay for me. Just and again, I don't want to harp on it too much, like we already have. The Savage Land is just so fucking boring. Like I don't, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it is. It's just so boring. I'm, I don't, I, I, and I know we're gonna have to get back to it at some point, and I'm just dreading it. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, let's talk about what we're gonna do after this episode because uh, it's at the end of the season, and we usually do, um, we take a little, we take a little break from the animated series, and we do a uh, a movie episode, which is what we did last season, and then we do a feedback episode. Uh, we want to let you guys decide what you're going to put us through. Um, yes. So our options were X Men Two, which is arguably the, the, the probably the best X Men movie of all time. Yes. Yes. So do yeah. you want to hear us talk some sugar? Yes. About X Men Two. Mm-hmm. Or do you want us to watch the Made for TV Generation X movie? <laughs> <laughs> and and not talk some sugar, but make some goofs and make a bunch yeah. of goofs and and you know basically it's going to be the abject suffering version of Days of Future. Yes, Cast. Um, I'll include a uh, when this episode goes out. There's going to be a poll on Twitter, and uh, you can find that on my Twitter at JG Greer. You can find that on Gary's Twitter, which is uh, G A R Y B U H Gary Ba, and uh, also uh, on the podcast Twitter the, at yeah. DOFC Podcast. Yeah, so follow that as well. Uh, yes. if, you, if you're not um so and keep in mind that it's not either our proposition it's which one do you want first yep because we're going to do both uh eventually no matter what we're going to do x-men 2 i'm not going to have an x-men podcast and not cover x-men 2 <laughs> like it's oh, going sure. to happen we'll, we'll, so. we'll do all the movies so yeah. like yeah all all the movies even the bad ones like every movie will get done mm-hmm. um it's just what order we do it so um yeah let us know uh if you like this show um please you know ratings reviews on itunes are really huge yep Letting people know about it is very huge. Um, and then you can also support us on Patreon. If you go to patreon.com forward slash duckfeedtv, that is also huge. All of these things are huge. 
I'm going to put out the call right now for feedback. Um, like if you guys want to give us prompts to talk about X-Men, if you have any comments or questions about X-Men season two of the animated series or really anything that we've covered so far, um, you can send those to D O F C podcast at gmail.com. You can also send those to our Twitter page or you can send them to our Facebook page. Or if you're a P- Patreon subscriber at patreon.com slash duck TV, you can hit me up on Slack. Just make a note yeah. that I should read that on the episode and I'll copy and paste it into my, into my file. Yeah, or uh, Gary at Duckfeed TV. Is or that too, yeah, sure. Yeah. So so lots of options there, uh, and now is the time to send those in as you're hearing this. Yep. So, yeah, I think that's about it. That's all um, I have to talk about, yeah. Gary. I'm done. Yeah. Good good season. Looking forward to the next season, um, where I think that it gets a little less even, but there are it gets a little bit more ambitious. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot more episodes in it, um, and some of which I remember being very good. So we're also introduced to the weird little time imp that hangs out with Bishop in the time stream, which is extremely bad. And so, we also get into some space stuff, man. We're going to get to the share and all that stuff. It's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, until next time, good luck, guys, and good night. <laughs> good luck and good night. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was typing and talking at the same time. Play, I play us out, Sam. Guys. <laughs> I was trying to find just a list of episodes in season three. Uh, oh. I to remind myself what, what we were doing. I should probably and, just... Uh, I've got that. I should probably just copy and paste Everything that Mojo created is gone, especially the audience. Ah, well, nothing lasts forever, especially in television. Did I tell you I used to go out with an actress with two heads? Yeah? Was she nice? Yes and no. Bubala! Ah, uh, come here! Come here! Yeah! You look great. Lost weight, had the face lift, whatever. Listen, it's time we did a fresh start, you know? Now, we did a little rethink on that rewrite for a regroup on a redraft. No, I'm talking new show, new time slot, new dimension, bigger hair, less money, the whole nine yards, huh? <laughs> Ooh, look, a jungle picture.